Today's video is very kindly sponsored by Squarespace. Hi everyone, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. So today I'm going to be talking about my process of filming, editing, and uploading videos to YouTube. I get questions about this a lot, so I thought I'd just make one comprehensive video about it. So yeah, I'm just going to go over my steps that I do. And my first step is definitely writing everything down that I want to talk about in the video. And then I start setting up my equipment. So um, my main tripod is this Vanguard tripod that I got from Amazon and I actually got the idea for this tripod from Amanda Rach Lee. She had her own kind of filming setup video and I thought I'd take her suggestion and get this tripod and I've loved it so far. Um, I've had it I think for a year now and I use it for all of my videos for the overhead shots. And then I have my second tripod, which used to be my main one that I would use for overhead shots, but now I use it um, for my second camera as kind of like a side angle for my videos. And the setup usually works out pretty well for me. The next thing I do is I get out my ring light and this is a relatively newer thing that I do in my videos. Um, I tend to have to film at night quite a bit, uh, about 90% of the time I would say. So I get out my ring light and it definitely helps with the saturation and the light in my videos. And now before I get out my cameras, I'm going to get out my memory cards, which is always a struggle because all of them are always full and I always seem to not know which footage I've already uploaded to my computer, so it's a fiasco. But then I get out my cameras and this first one is my first ever DSLR that I've owned, which is what I started filming my YouTube videos with. It's the EOS Rebel SL1 and it works very well. And I changed out the stock lens to a Canon 50 millimeter lens and it works great with that lens. I love this lens so much with this camera. Um, and I use this for my side shots and my b-roll shots and then my main camera that I use is my Canon 80D with the original stock lens that it comes with and every once in a while I'll use a 24 millimeter lens but I really love this camera and I love the fact that it has that pull out monitor that you can um, turn toward yourself. The biggest differences between this camera and my last one is the lighting and the coloring is much better on the ADD. I also find that the stabilization and the autofocus capabilities are far better than my old Canon camera, but honestly, you don't need the fanciest camera to make good videos. I just really wanted something reliable and I ended up getting a really good deal on this guy, so it ended up working out. And now for one of my favorite parts, setting up the aesthetics of the video and my first thing that I always get out is my garland that I got from Michaels and some string lights and lately I've always been filming on my uh, dining table. Now my old desk was my favorite because it was glass and it would reflect all the fairy lights and everything and kind of make it more of a dreamy vibe. So I ended up figuring out that I could pop that glass part off and bring it to my table whenever I filmed videos. And that way I'd still get those reflections that I loved and it also protects my dining table. So it was perfect. Um, and now I'm getting out all the props that I kind of put in the sides of my shots. I always have a candle and all of my ceramics. These are my favorite ones. You guys have probably seen them in many, many videos over the years. And having all these little props and ceramics that I love so much brings me joy when I paint for sure. And it's also kind of a way to express the vibe that I'm going for and the aesthetic that I kind of um, enjoy doing in my art. I paint a lot of moons, so I try to have a lot of like moons. I also paint a lot of plants, so I like to have that garland there to kind of make everything a little cohesive. I also do a lot of sparkles in my paintings, so I like to have this fairy light setup where I wrap it around my camera and it kind of reflects on the glass and makes it look like there's a bunch of sparkles everywhere. So yeah, I just try to make everything look a little bit more cohesive with whatever my style I 
I'm going for is. And the glitter is just an extra little thing. I used to do this a lot, but um, I think it kind of brings a little bit more color and sparkles to the setup. And yeah, then I just kind of look in my monitor to see if everything looks good. And now is the point where I can start filming. So I just like to have my bullet journal centered in the camera. And as you can see, I even have my side angle camera set up there and I'm pretty much ready to go at this point. Now throughout the process, if I wanna get a closer up shot, I'll take out my older camera and I'll set it on manual focus and I will get some um, close up shots. And I just try to be extra careful about stabilizing myself when I'm doing this since the 50 millimeter lens does not have stabilization on it. Um, and I also use the manual focus mode where I can just focus it myself and get those bokeh effect shots. And if you're looking for a really good lens for this, I would definitely suggest getting the 50 millimeter lens. It's perfect for those kind of shots for sure. Um, and yeah, now that I'm all done filming, I'm going to take out my memory card and slide it into my MacBook Pro. I have a very old MacBook Pro. This isn't my main computer that I use, but I purely use this computer for video and photo storage as well as editing. And before I start editing, I like to get cozy because I am going to be editing for hours on end usually with these kind of videos. Now, a lot of people ask how long I take to film and edit videos. I am not really sure about that one because I do a lot of it in chunks usually. I'll like stop and start. Um, but if I were to guess, I would say the filming process takes about five hours or more for a typical plan with me video. And the editing process, I want to say it takes like 10 plus hours. Now the video you're watching right now has taken me probably 20 hours to edit, but that is much higher than usual, I will say. Um, and the editing software that I use is Final Cut Pro 10, and I'm just going to start by doing a new project. And on one of my memory cards, I loaded onto my computer, but if you can, keep as much of the footage onto your memory card and just drag it straight from your memory card so that it's not loading all of those files on your computer and taking space. But yeah, once all those files are in order, I fast forward them using the modify and then read time tab. Otherwise, you guys would probably be watching a three hour long video. <laughs> Also, I made a note of this earlier, but this is the time where I will select all of the overhead shots that I did and uh, flip them 180 degrees. You just do that in the right menu and then your overhead shots won't be upside down. And then I will make kind of smaller modifications like stabilization, um, which is something that I do for a lot of the B-roll shots to kind of make it look like it's very smooth and not jittery. And I did not figure out about this feature for a very long time and now it's one of my favorite features of Final Cut Pro. It just makes those B-roll shots look so good. Um, and then I will add the text. So I go over to the text tab and I either use the custom one, which is just like a plain text option or the typewriter one where it looks like the letters are being typed. And then I go over to the right menu and I select the font that I want and the sizing that I want. And then I can kind of drag it uh, to wherever I want it to show up on the shot. I've been using this Arcade Classic font a lot lately, so that's what I'm going with for this video, but I have a ton of fonts that I've acquired over the years that have become my favorites that I use in a lot of my videos, and these are kind of them. The ones with the little star by them mean that I downloaded them from the internet and they didn't already come with my computer. Another thing that I love doing is making little pixel speech bubbles on this website and downloading them, and then I just drag them them over um, to Final Cut Pro and it just makes it a little animation and I think it's just really cute. So the next thing I want to briefly go over without going into too much detail because I kind of want to save it for another video is how I make my little animations in Procreate. So Procreate is a app that I use on my iPad for doing art 
and I just set up a new canvas, make the background transparent, and then I start drawing with usually a white pen of some sort. Um, and this will be my first layer. Uh, after this layer, I'm going to add a couple more layers and I'm gonna turn on this animation assist option. And then I'm going to add my second layer where I will kind of go over the same drawing um, and just change the sizing of things a little bit, like the sparkles and stuff. And then whatever I want to move in the frame, I will kind of make that movement and change that little part of it. And I usually do this three to four times, usually three because I'm pretty lazy about it, but um, sometimes I'll do four if the animation needs it. And this one I definitely think needs another layer of that middle part just to kind of make it go um, up and down. And then I uh, decrease the playback speed to like four usually. And then when I wanna share, I export it as a animated PNG file which allows for the transparent background to be held up and then I drag it in and resize it and it's now going to be a little gif in my um, video. It's actually very very easy <laughs> compared to what I thought it was going to be like when I first started doing this and they're also just super fun to create. I usually use the studio pen to do a lot of the calligraphy or um, the drawing for a lot of my drawings. Now I want to create a whole dedicated video on using Procreate and how I make animations and doing everything in more detail like the pens that I use and everything. Um, so I'm sorry if this is kind of more fast-paced and confusing but I will definitely make that video very soon. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how I make these little animations for my videos and show you the three types of animations I like to add. So the first one was more of a drawing, the second one was me doing like a brush lettering um, animation, and the third one I like to create text with fonts that you already have. So I just typed out fonts for my header and I'm going to outline that, create some little sparkles around it, and I'm gonna do that three times. So I'm gonna outline that uh, text three times. I'm gonna fill it in and each time I'm gonna make it just a little tiny bit different so that the changes show up on each layer when you play the animation. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty, pretty simple to do and I think it looks pretty cute. Also, I'm very sorry about my smudgy screen. I didn't really know what to do about it. I tried to clean it like three times and nothing was working. So I'm very sorry about that. But anyways, I just exported all of my animations into um, the spot that I want them. And I'll usually copy and paste that little clip several times to cover whatever area I want the animation on. Um, and yeah, I just think it's the cutest way to add your own little like stylized addition into your videos. And I will say I do not do this on all of my videos. <laughs> I am a lot of the time very lazy and skip this step altogether, but I really love adding them. And now for color grading. So a lot of the time, if my video has a lot of natural light, I won't need to do this at all really. I'll maybe increase the contrast and saturation a little bit. But on videos where I'm filming at night, I usually use this exact setup that you see here to color grade my shots. Um, I increase the pinks and the blues a little bit, the saturation a little bit, and I increase the exposure. Now once I'm done with the adjustments and I want to copy those settings onto another um, clip, you just do Command C and then click on the clip you want to copy those settings to and click Option Command V. Um, also you can save it as a preset on that menu over there, uh, give it a name and then it will show up in your preset options and you can just drag that from now on to whatever clip you want to change. Pretty handy. 
and then I will go in and add music at this point when everything is pretty much edited. Um, so I'll go on to Epidemic Sound, which I think I paid 10 or $15 to uh, have a membership with them and I am able to use any of their music in my videos. Um, it's much easier than finding royalty-free music personally, I think. And then at this point, I will go in and do the voiceover. I use my Blue Yeti microphone that I actually found at Goodwill for like 15 bucks. Thought it wasn't gonna work and it has worked perfectly for this past year. I use the little upside down heart shape setting and then I just start doing my voiceover. And I will say I used to hate doing these voiceovers just because I it did not come naturally to me in the beginning. I think it took me probably two years to even be comfortable with doing voiceovers. Um, and now I am totally fine with doing it, but the voiceover itself probably takes about one to two hours for me to do. And usually I'm doing it in the middle of the night, like right now it's 2.43 AM. <laughs> so it's definitely my least favorite part of the process. But now I get to export. So I click the share button and then I say share master file and I export it as a H.264, um, which Basically, it's just uh, the quality of the video that I want to select. And once it's shared, I open YouTube, click the little upload video button, and I drag it right on in there and start uploading the video. And yeah, I could definitely say this is my favorite part because after hours and hours of filming, editing, and voiceovering, it's definitely satisfying to just see the final product go out there and see you guys really like it um, from what I can tell at least uh, and so yeah it's just it's a very rewarding thing um, after a very long process of putting everything together but yeah I don't know if it takes this long for other people to edit videos but I am just a perfectionist when it comes to all the little details of everything so it's definitely a journey <laughs> and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful i know i wasn't able to go into detail about everything so if you have any questions you can comment them below and before i go i want to talk about squarespace squarespace is an online platform that allows you to build and host your own website super easily i created this website without having any prior knowledge of how to build build a website at all and right now I'm actually just starting to build a website for my mom's business and I think it's so awesome that they offer so many different kinds of services for different kinds of people and businesses for me I get the ability to create my own shop on my website and for my mom's tutoring business this scheduling tool is perfect for her but yeah if you guys want to try it out for yourself you can go to squarespace.com slash Jenny journals for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase Thank you guys so much for watching. It's currently 3.15 a.m. So I'm going to head to bed and I will see you guys in the next video. Definitely let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions though and I will for sure try to answer them.